Hello, everybody. Um, does it work? Right. Um, my name is Marianne Stamen. I work for uh, uh, Sound Vision in Hilversum uh, uh, as a preservation officer. So this topic is really uh, close to my heart. I uh, preferred file formats. Um, and uh, um, yeah, this is my agenda for, for the next 20, uh, 20 minutes or so. Feel free to, to ask questions if you, if you don't understand something, or I'm going too quick, or, or if, if you have a, a question that can, can, can raise, raise a discussion. Um, after my intro, I, I, I'd like to tell you a little bit about sound vision and how we uh, uh, created our new policies for file formats, accepted file formats, preferred file formats, file formats like um, you want to know them, uh, you want to call them, and I'll present some dilemmas uh, in creating these new policies I'd like to share with you. Uh, and then, then we will end my presentation. So, um, about file, mode, file format policies uh, as an intro, um, together with the, the Dutch Digital Heritage Network, we created a guide for, uh, for making policies on file formats, uh, preferred file, mode, file formats, I'm uh, stumbling on this word. But, uh, um, and um, there we, after a lot of discussion, we said, okay, so there are four lack of perspectives important before you uh, decide on what file formats for your specific repository are um, relevant or important or chosen to be accepted or preferred. And these are the four perspectives. So you have the designated community that really wants to play or wants to play out or has its own um, needs that you want to um, meet. Uh, there are maybe strategic reasons uh, for the future uh, that may, may not be so uh, evident at the time, but uh, are really important to, to already um, keep in mind. There might also be technical support issues uh, from your system that might support specific file formats or does not support others, which is even more uh, complicated. So you might really like uh, a, a particular file format for some reason, but if your system at the time does not accept it, then yeah, what can you do? Uh, you, you, you will start looking for an alternative, uh, I guess. And of course, there are also obligations to producers, uh, so the people that hand in your new material, and they come with new file formats because they develop and file formats develop. So also there, from that perspective, there's a push um, to to implement other file formats and to su support them as a repository. And I made a small drawing to put this in the OAIS from a learning perspective, also nice. So really we have uh, to do with the four, uh, these four components. Of, of course, it's the consumers and the producers that are easily recognized. But then also uh, administration I highlighted because administration really stands for your ICT uh, procedures, uh, your systems that make, uh, make possible all the Operations that are within ingest or archival storage or metadata management or uh, the access. So there uh, is your ICT component. Um, and of course your management, your strategic reviews, and in the end management has to approve your, your new policies. So then now uh, about uh, Simon Vision. Uh, you might know that Simon Vision originally is a um, um, radio or broadcast uh, repository. And uh, in its history, it had a, a lot of merges with other repositories. So that's how our um, collection came to grow. 
into broader, to, to different um, uh, sectors, as you might say, not only broadcast, also film and photo, and yeah, we, we, and, and that's how we uh, came to be the media uh, repository or archive, as we like to say uh, now. Uh, and that also means that uh, uh, our file formats at the start were very um, specific to this broadcast um, uh, sector. They were both our producers and our users. So in those two sides, they, they were very important in deciding what file formats uh, for Cyber Vision are uh, the preferred file formats. Uh, but the last, let's say, five, five years, maybe even ten years for people that were up front, <laughs> Uh, but uh, new makers came with new file formats, and Simon Vision wants to meet those new needs. So this is the, the file formats, the sheet that we have in place now, until this right day. It, the new policies have not been uh, accepted yet by management, so this is uh, our uh, actual uh, state. Um, and I would like to highlight um, the, the top ones because they are really the automated uh, workflows that are in place. Uh, we have the broadcast uh, MXF file format for the, the video, of course, that goes in every day. Um, the audio files are WAV files, and uh, for film, digitized film, we use DPX, and of course, uh, together with the WAV. Uh, for the audio, and we also make an MXF to for, for the playout and the um, ordering process. So these files are very much um, uh, well known within our primary uh, uh, target audience. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> um, and uh, at, at the bottom, you, you see al already the, the web video coming up. Like, uh, yes, uh, we have a lot of web video nowadays. How are we going to save this? Because it's, these are really small uh, files. And uh, do we, are, are we going to, to transcode them to MXF as well? No, we don't want that. Because they become really big and it doesn't help. And they will not get any better. So this, this, that was the start for us to, to to, to, set to, get, to sit together with some uh, working group. And in this working group, there were uh, uh, people from Ingest, people from ICT, and uh, people from metadata management. And so we gathered all the knowledge together to, to talk about this topic, which was really uh, important. <coughs> um, so, uh, what was established at the, at the time was we had a daily ingest for TV radio and also for digitization. And uh, within this workflow, there were uh, high uh, standards for quality checks. So this was all very much automated, and we, yeah, we, we were very proud actually on having this uh, done that way together with the broadcast uh, companies. So, Quality check on as well the, the building up of the file, so the, like uh, the body and the, uh, the header and the footer and the, yeah, all the, what you expect for each file format. The quality of the audio and the video, and also technical properties of the file as well as the codec. So it's also very important that it's not only the file format that you check, like oh it's an MXF, great but that you go into that file and, uh, and check what kind of profile exactly uh, is this file format and what kind of codec has been used because within an MXF it can, can be any codec um, and the same counts for the MP4. So, so those are really uh, important and that's what made it so time consuming really to create this new policy because you really have to dig into these details to create the, 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 yeah, the, the, the precise test uh, profiles 
that um, that need to be in place if you are going to to extend your, your policies. So this is an example of our output from or, uh, test profile, I think it is, for the MXF, where you can see there are lots of details and that uh, serious reports are, or errors are um, uh, shown or, or pop up as soon as uh, some, some limits <coughs> are uh, um, not in place, or whatever you call it. Um, and it's the same sort of uh, report about uh, the quality of the, the audio, um, which Quality of audio and video is, is much harder, of course, to, to test because you never know what it should be. Uh, whereas the technical bits are really, uh, once you know them, it's, uh, yeah, uh, you meet them or you don't. You don't. Um, so here we have the, the extra, uh, the new file formats that we are going to put in place for Universal Vision in the next couple of months, I think, um, if all goes well. So we uh, created a, um, a, a profile to test progress in two versions, because progress has many sort of um, uh, variants, I should say. Uh, and also uh, we are testing still a profile for the MP4. Uh, so we add MP4. Three in this sheet. Then about uh, dilemmas that uh, in this process we encountered and we tried to solve or we made choices, like uh, the theory uh, as opposed to the real world and uh, policy that you can think of behind your desk versus practical uh, trying it out. And also the term just in case versus just in time, which you might know or might not. But uh, traditionally, what we usually do as a repository is to, to create a policy that is um, just in case. So we define our file formats that we say it must be that file format. And if it's not, we will transcode it to that file format just in case, we never know, just, just in case we transcode that to that preferred file format and maybe we hold on to the original, but the, the transcoded file format, that's our master. Whereas just in time means that you accept the old uh, file format and you keep monitoring all these new entries, so you really need to know a lot about them. You cannot just jump them in, but um, you really have to um, analyze them first and, and register, oh, this is uh, this file format with those uh, specific uh, technical aspects. Um, and you have to monitor whether such new file format or the old one out becomes obsolete or Maybe there's another reason that you, just in time, really need to transcode them after all. Because the reason for this is you really don't like transcoding. Not only because it's work, but also because you always transform your original. So you really don't want that. So um, for that reason, for the MP4, for instance, we introduced this just in time policy um, because we were hesitant to pick out just one specific profile because in, in real world there are so many different varieties and um, I'll come to that, back to that later. Um, so uh, the dilemma about theory against practice really is about those four aspects I introduced at, at the start uh, like what, what are the real drivers for choosing a specific uh, file format, as opposed to these uh, uh, factors that are usually named to be important for the dur durability, or dur durability. durability uh, of your files. Um, it's in Dutch, I'm sorry, but uh, I tried to translate it a little bit uh, into, into English. And the source of this list is the NARA 
the National Archives of Records Management in, in the United States that have um, listed like 300 or more file formats against all these aspects. So that for us is a, is a really nice source um, to, to, to get to know more about all these file formats and how they, how durable uh, are they according to these factors. But then yet again, you might find uh, a perfect file format that is open and it's transparent and you can uh, read it. Uh, it's not transcripted or uh, encrypted, so there are no problems there. It tells us there um, to know uh, about uh, patent um, rights, like you are, uh, they are free to use. But then again, if your system doesn't support them, yeah set them aside. So, so that, that's really the, the, the dilemma of what I call theory based practice. Um, and even uh, theory is, is, is even more precise than you, than you might expect because in this uh, sheet you see the, the different scores can even have different uh, outcomes that add up to one single number tells you this is June 26. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, what, what does it say really? So, to stress my point. Um, also, what is important is that uh, these uh, scores are often are only about file formats and not about codecs. And especially for, as we already said, for audiovisual material, we have to do with Codex as well for the video as for the audio. And of course, um, creating the video file, you, you have to use a codec to make it um, usable in many ways. Um, the raw file is not very practical. But then to, for the playout, you really need to, uh, that, that codec uh, again. And um, you you always, you're not always sure about quality or other aspects from the original by using this code. So uh, these durability codes or preservation codes, we also should, I think, extend them to, to create a bigger theory basis to the codex and not only to the files. And that's something that we will really have to work on. Then the, the, about the dilemma between uh, uh, making policy behind your desk and uh, doing the right thing in, in, in the real world. What we did with this working group was uh, really creating this workflow. So next to the automated workflow that, that sort of does the same for our NSF and WAVE and uh, perhaps DPX as well, uh, we created um, a manual workflow that did just the same, like a virus check, a MD5 check, and then you had quality control, and within this quality control, we were able to, to really set these uh, specs uh, precisely for the test profile, uh, and to, to, vary, to, to, to vary with those, uh, to, to decide on what, what goes through uh, in the end, uh, to really import into the system, and then also it was tested, does the system really support it? <laughs> Can we really play out in our, in our system? Uh, so um, going all the way through this, this, this workflow, uh, was, yeah, that, that was really hard work. Because it, at, when at the end something uh, appears not to work, you, you go all back to the front. <laughs> So that was done iteratively many times. Um, so, and also, um, I know three minutes left now, <laughs> but um, yeah, especially for the MP4, and when I'm talking about the just in time or just in place uh, uh, dilemma, at, at, at first we, we really want to, to keep, to get in everything, but then we find out our system did not 
uh, support everything. So then we, we created a test part profile that, that was really exactly what the system would support. So then again, yeah, what are you doing? Are you just in time? Are you just in, in, in case? So also there we really have to fine tune our policies uh, to make it, uh, yeah, not only by word, but um, yeah, re real policies about what we are doing. Um, this might end. So just in time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marilyn. We have a, a good three minutes for questions. Are there any from the audience? I see two hands when we come up to you. Uh, David Flugel. Uh, in, in your video um, list, I didn't see uh, anything above HD. What is your stance on UHD and anything at a higher resolution? So, what's the, what's the UH? UHD out of the 4K video. Ultra high, ultra high definition 4K video. No, we, we don't actually yet uh, support those in our regular. Um, it's, it's just one of those uh, file formats where we are experimenting. We were doing things like uh, when uh, a creator comes up with uh, that sort of files, and we are talking to the broadcasters because they are um, also uh, trying to find find out what um, standards are they going to use for the, for those higher uh, definition uh, TV. Um, and really we try to to make it a joint process to find out okay, what standard also from uh, from our perspective is, is uh, really nice for future. And um, because yeah, the MXF uh, traditionally came from the broadcasters and we just Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. <laughs> In, yeah, we ingested, yeah. We took it as uh, something that was, yeah, okay, uh, that's it. But for the 4K, we, 8K even, we, we tried to make more of like a joint uh, discussion about it with our producer. Let's yeah. get one more question from the audience. Uh, Kieran O'Leary, National Library of Ireland. Um, wondering if you could talk about, uh, I saw PDF was crossed out. And TIFF is in for documents. Let's talk about that decision. And is that born digital or just digitized it? Thank you. It's a video conference, Kieran. Yeah. Just mentioning that. Thank you. Yeah, I just left one out on purpose, actually. But um, yeah, um, the TIFF is all. Is all uh, um, it's a little. Uh, Digitized um, only lately uh, the, uh, demands for for born digital TIFF. But it's so so there there you can actually set the the, the specific technical uh, things um, and PDF PDF PDF. I think it's the same. I think it's also the, the product of the digitization process uh, so far. And only with the new merges with the, um, the press uh, collection that was recent, uh, we might in future get more uh, um, yeah, born digital documents. Uh, we really want to preserve that way. So that's a new uh, next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to look forward to. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay, starting up as off on preserve, preserving file formats for preservations, can I have uh, one round of applause?